Hello, New Holland. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. This is kind of a, another one of those unusual events. As I am taping this, I am doing this on Friday afternoon because they tell us that uh, snow is coming uh, Saturday night and maybe uh, ice. And we'd, uh, you know, we can handle snow a little bit, but we don't, really don't like the ice. And uh, I'm praying beforehand for those that uh, are part of our family and our neighborhood and our our city that we don't lose power, though that's going to possibly be uh, one of the circumstances that we go through. I normally don't ever uh, call off church until, you know, the day of or something like that because so many people want to do it early. Um, and then sometimes the weather doesn't turn out as bad as what it, ha it has been predicted. But yet, the Georgia Department of Transportation is already telling us that they're asking us already to uh, not be on the roads. So we thought it would be wise to uh, go ahead and uh, do this so that you could have some kind of church or some kind of a togetherness, uh, New Holland-wise, uh, on Sunday morning. So I pray for safety for you. I pray for us in just a few moments anyway, but just letting you know that that's why we're doing what we're doing. Thank you for coming to the website. Uh, we are... Uh, going to be sending emails and, and text and, uh, uh, so that everybody can know about this. But just uh, pray for your health as well. Uh, COVID has been going around. I got tested yesterday, um, came down with the fever on Monday, and uh, it broke uh, Wednesday afternoon. But I um, just don't know that I'm positive yet, but the only one that's in the building is um, I'm here and uh, my son, Jared, is up in the sound booth taking care of things, and uh, he has had COVID already. Um, and hopefully the Holy Spirit will join us, and uh, that'll be a wonderful thing. And we'll just uh, do this, and uh, love y'all, appreciate you, praying for you, want God's will to be done in your life um, in an amazing, mighty way. Just remember, God knows about the circumstance, circumstances ahead of time. Um, so uh, I, I'm kind of weak, so uh, just to, uh, forgive me for uh, um, preaching in weakness today, but maybe like Paul said, uh, when I'm weak, then I can be strong. So maybe the Lord will be able to speak and whisper to our hearts, and God's will can be done today. So um, uh, if you have a copy of God's Word, uh, would you just uh, take it and open it to Revelation chapter 4? I think one of the amazing things about watching this is you can just pause it <laughs> and come back later. So if you don't have your Bible now, just hit the pause button, go get your Bible, come back, and then you can pick up with me. And uh, if you want a cup of coffee in the middle of it, your my sermon, hey, that my sermon will go down a whole lot better with some good hot coffee. So, um, but I do appreciate you, um, eager to hear from the Lord, from His Word. Uh, I am not going to uh, preach my, the series that I've been preaching on. I've been preaching. The uh, Lord has been direct to me to talk about what it means to believe and uh, living belief the way the Lord would want us to. But uh, I'm not going to be continuing that. Um, I just, uh, when I felt this morning that we probably needed to go ahead and tape this for Sunday, uh, I asked the Lord what it was that he wanted me to say. And uh, pretty quickly, I went to uh, Revelation chapter number four. And uh, so that's where we're going to, uh, to look at today. So if you have a copy of God's Word, hopefully you have it by now. Um, I, I'm going to begin in the end of chapter three. And let me just give you a, a, a little bit of a, just a, a little bit of, the, of where I'm coming from. There is no exhaustive um, I can't do an exhaustive study on Revelation 4 in 30 minutes. I, I can't do it. Uh, it would take me uh, probably five or six sermons to do it. But uh, I'm going to just try to, to move through it. So um, just uh, if there's something I didn't answer that you wanted to hear answered, something I didn't say that you really... Uh, wanted to know more about, then just ask me and we'll, we can have conversation about it. But when we talk about belief, which is what this study is all about, there's some things that we should know 
And, and it should be a vital part of our understanding of Christianity. And that is that, that we have eternal life in Jesus. But every soul is eternal. Those who do not know Jesus will be separated from him throughout all of eternity. But those who do know him will go to a place that is called heaven. And right? And he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, or many places, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So that's what the Lord is doing now. He's preparing a place for those that he loves, those who have put their, their salvation in him, their trust in him. He has been their redemption. He is their, their master, their Lord, their Savior, their, their friend. And we walk in this wonderful relationship of, of knowing God and, and being with him. Now, one day, and I don't know when that day's coming, we're going to go, we're going to step out of this world into the next world. Now, uh, there are times where God's Spirit is drawing us to himself. And that's why I wanted to start at the end of chapter 3, a verse that is very well known. It's tagged on to, the, to what Jesus wanted to say to the church at Laodicea. And after he spoke to that church, he said these words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him, dine with him, he with me. If you hear the voice of God and you make it available, you open up the door of your heart and let him come into your life, then he says here, I will come in, that's a positive statement, I will dine with him, that means relationship, and he with me. We will do things together, we will be one with God in his heaven. Now, hear this, this is cool. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. We don't talk about this much, but once again, this is not what we think about it, this is not even what John the Apostle John, who was uh, uh, given this privilege to, to pin these words down in the book of Revelation. This is Jesus' words. He said, he said, to that one who trusts in him, he calls him overcomer. He said, I will grant to him, I will allow to him. I have the authority and I share this authority by giving this to them. I will grant to him to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So when Jesus, when he went to the cross and he gave his life as our ransom for our sins and was buried on, on, on Resurrection Sunday, the Spirit gave him life and he rose from the dead. And, and, and 40 days later, he ascended back to glory to sit down at the right hand of the Father. Here, he is saying that if we will will open up the door of our heart, then we will be an overcomer too. And that we can sit with him on those thrones. That's an amazing statement. He will grant us to sit with him on his throne as he is with his father on his throne. So he says, here's the admonition. If you have ears to hear, then hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you can hear in your heart that God is speaking to you and telling you these things are true, then, then that's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of understanding and knowledge and, and knowing what God wants to do from now throughout all of eternity. So when we move into chapter 4, verse 1, let's just quickly look forward into what was seen there. He said, after these things I looked, John looked, and behold, a door open in heaven. New King James, King James and New King James, and a lot of the translations say, and, and, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. But the word standing there is actually not in Scripture. It was, it was uh, not part of the words that, that were pinned down, but they were added to it to bring understanding. But it literally means, he said, I looked and behold, a door open in heaven. I like that for one simple reason. When, when we go back to Revelation 3.20, he said, By, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That door is closed. And he's knocking. There is no latch as, 
as the great picture has been portrayed. Uh, uh, there is no uh, door latch on the outside for him to open the door. We have to open up the door. He comes and calls us to himself. He comes and convicts us and draws us to himself. He's knocking on our heart's door, wooing us to himself. If we will open the door, then that's the open door of, of a relationship and salvation. And, and he will come and live within our heart so that when we come to the end of our life, we can step out of um, our existence into his existence. So because of Jesus... There is a door open in heaven. And he says here, um, and the first voice which I heard was like the voice of a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. So in chapter one, when he, uh, he meets the Lord there and the Lord says, I want you to write down the things which you see, the things which... Uh, are and the things which shall come. So now he is saying, I want you to, this is talking about future times. And he says, I want you to come up here and I want you to see the things which must take place after this. They haven't taken place yet. So this is a picture. This is a vision. This is where John gets to see heaven. Now, others have seen heaven in um. First and Second Corinthians, in, in chapter number uh, uh, twelve, in verse number two, Paul talks about when he got to see a picture of heaven. In Second Corinthians twelve two, he says, "I know a man in Christ who fourteen years ago, whether in the body I do not know, whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was called up to the third heaven." He's speaking of himself. And he says, I was called up. Same word that is talked about here in um, chapter 4. Come up here. And, and he said, I was taken to the third heaven. Now, there's not three heavens that you may be thinking of, but let me describe what those three heavens are. The first heaven that is described is the area in which our sky is, where the oxygen is, where uh, we breathe where the birds fly, right? Where, where Delta flies through up there. It, it, it's from here up before you step out into the, to the stars. So it's our atmosphere that we have here. This is called the first heaven. The second heaven is where the atmosphere that is beyond that, that is our Milky Way and all the galaxies that are there. That's the, 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 we, what we would call outer space, as some have said it, because it's space that's out there. That's all they can, can define it as. But that's all those billions and billions and trillions of galaxies that are out there that is so uh, enormous that scientists just have a, a hard time comprehending it. And, and that is the, the, the second heaven that is there. But the third heaven is the presence and, and the abode of God. Now, it's going to start describing that here in a little bit, but someone else in Scripture uh, got to see it as well, and I want you to hear what Ezekiel said about it as well. Now, he was, um, at the children of Israel had been taken into captivity, and he was there, and it says in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was uh, among the captives by the river Tabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So once again, God gave him a privilege to see something that was uh, basically in the, in the land of, of timelessness, the land where God is, the eternal place called heaven. Now, there's a lot that is there that you can see in chapter 1, chapter 3, chapter 15, but um, I just wanted to, to share a, a few things real quick to you from Ezekiel 1 because they're going to be very much like what we're going to look at in uh, Revelation 4. Um, there's First of all, the picture of the cherubim, we're not going to talk about that yet, but we will talk about them. But then in verse 25, 
it says, a, a voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings. That's talking about the, the cherubim. Now, hold on. There's a firmament that, that we're going to talk about in a moment in, in Revelation 4 that's a sea of glass. Now, I, I'm saying that now, and, and Lord, help me to make this plain and clear. But, but it's, it's like a, uh, a distinction from uh, the second heaven to the third heaven. There's a division. You just don't walk into the presence of God. Matter of fact, uh, there were people that were cast out of heaven, right? And they couldn't just go back in. Even Satan himself, who was one of God's cherubim before he sinned. Matter of fact, he was the guarding cherub that covers, Ezekiel 28 tells us. So hold on. Here we see that there is a throne that is there. There is a firmament that is separating the two. And you'll see some that are under, but you'll also see God who is above and the ones that are there. So he says, And above the firmament, over their heads, was the likeness of a throne. We see the throne. In appearance like a sapphire stone. We'll talk about that more in a moment. A diamond. On the likeness of the throne was the likeness and appearance of a man high above it. So you see the appearance of the throne and the Son of Man on the throne. And also above, from, above, uh, from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around it. We'll see that when we get to Revelation 4 as well. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around. And the appearance of a rainbow and a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. This is Ezekiel's picture of really seeing pretty much the same thing that John saw in Revelation chapter 4. So look what it says in Revelation 4, verse number 2. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now, once again, uh, we see the Spirit takes him there, and the first thing that is seen is the throne of God. It is the center of everything. The very presence of God. Now there's nowhere that you can go that you can escape the presence of God. Even here on earth, you cannot escape the presence of God. It is everywhere. The Bible even says that it, where could you go to, to get away from it? You could even go to hell, but the presence of God is even there. He is the God of of all. So the very first thing that you, you, you need to know is that there is a throne rep which represents power and authority and government. And there's one that is on the throne. Not me, not you, not an angel, not an archangel or a seraphim or a cherubim. There is one, though, that is on the throne. And he who sat uh, there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. The jasper that is the, the clear, that is the hard, that is the brilliant, uh, that is the, the diamond in its, in its absolute radiance of light that is there. It is hard that really shows the judgment of God, the power of God, the finality of the infinite, Everything resides in the one that is on the throne, the government, the power, the authority of heaven. Only one heaven, not two, not 27, just one, just one. So here we see he, um, there, there is one that sat on the throne. He was like the jasper and the sardis stone, sardius stone. That, that is the one that is flaming red. That makes me think of redemption. I, I just think when you see the government and the strength and the power and the brilliance and the holiness and the clarity 
of the jasper, you also see the, the flaming red of the sardius stone that, that can't, how can it speak of anything other than our redemption? The, the, what saves us? The blood of Christ. When, when, when Jesus went back to the, to the throne room in heaven, after he ascended, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He's there on the throne. The blood was placed on the mercy seat of the throne in glory. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The blood of Christ makes it permanent forevermore. I have loved you with an everlasting love, he says. And, and this, is, this is what we see here. And it says, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. That rainbow is the firmament that is there, and, and it's like an emerald showing. Emeralds always green, which always represents the uh, symbolism for the earth, but it's the symbolism of the separation of our sins from God and the rainbow. Remember, the rainbow was given to remind them that judgment was there, but judgment would never come again. Not in a 180 like we see on the earth, but a full circle. The throne above. But, but we see that the redemption that is there shows the brilliance that God would never bring judgment again. When we, when we get the picture, we see the throne we see the power, the purity, the holiness of the man that is on the throne. We see the redemption that is shining. That has to be the glory of the redemption of God. We see the rainbow that is there that separates the two, showing that there will never be judgment again. Verse 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, plural, I saw 24 elders sitting. So here you see thrones, 24 thrones, and 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. They had crowns of gold on their head. Now hold on, what is the 24 elders that are there that are sitting on these 24 thrones? Well, let me just make this quick. I'm not going to go into the full of it, but I, let me just give you the answer as quickly as I can. Uh, that is the, the 12 that represents the apostles of the New Testament and the 12 that represent the tribes in the Old Testament, the children of, of Israel, Jacob's children. So you see 12 that represent uh, God's covenant in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and you see 12 that represent the New Covenant. So really, it represents of those that are looking toward the cross, the Old Testament saints, and those that look back at the cross, what was done at the cross, that is the New Testament saints or the church. So you see the totality of all the believers among those 24 elders. And he's got a throne for all of them. Now hold on, let me just pause and go back to chapter 3, verse 20. He says, to him who overcomes... I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. It is an amazing thought that God would want us to be there with him. And, and I don't mean we're not God. We're children of God. We've been cleansed by the blood of the lamb. But not because we deserve it or earn it. It is the gift of grace that we can rule and reign with him. That does not mean in any way, in any way, that we are co-equal other than that we are like Christ, that he allowed us to be like him. Now, in humility, we will know, as we should know today. In blessing, God is not saying uh, I am up here, you must, um, you must grovel at my feet. No, we, we have been given all of the blessings. I, I've said this before. He opens up all the treasury of the holiness of his goodness and his nature and grace and mercy and just pours out 
His blessings on us. This is His desire. His desire is to, to let you know that He loves you, not just so that, that lets you know that how great He is. We get to see that. But it's more than that. He doesn't just hold it for Himself. He shares and bestows that on us. So here He says, uh, around the thrones, 24 thrones, and on the throne I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. That's the holiness of the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. And they had go, uh, crowns of gold on their head. Look, <laughs> what a blessing that, that we have the crown, the Stephanos. That means that we have been faithful over the the, the talents that God's given us, the gifts that God's given us, the opportunities that God's given us, the service to, to be here on the earth in service for the Lord, that I serve the risen Savior. Now, uh, praise God, we put our thoughts on the risen Savior, but, that, but we need to put our thoughts on the first of that too. I serve. Every day we have an opportunity to serve. Every day we have an opportunity to yield unto Him, to be obedient unto Him, to give unto Him, to yield unto Him, to be used for His honor and His glory and His blessing. That's why we're here. It, otherwise, He would have just saved us and took us to heaven. But we get to go through the, the difficulties of life and trust Him in the difficulties and praise Him in the difficulties and thank Him and not argue with Him and, and, and not be greedy for things of this earth. But Lord, that, to let our all of existence be in the, the love of what we will have forever, which is what is deserving, the only thing that is deserving, and that is Him. So we will be there crowned with the blessings that he wants to bestow upon us. Verse 5, And from the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings and voices. Many times in Scripture you'll see this. Uh, Exodus chapter 19, when, when Moses was there and the presence of God was on Mount Sinai, and, and all the children of Israel saw the lightnings, heard the thunderings. They even said that it was the voice of God, and they were afraid. Okay? But you don't see fear here. You don't see fear here. This is just the, the, the power of the glory of God. And he said, seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In, in the tabernacle, there was the picture of the candlestick, the seven uh, flames of the candlestick, which represented the Holy Spirit of God. In the temple, they did the very same thing outside of the Holy of Holies that was there, showing basically the Spirit of God. Seven is the perfect number. The Holy Spirit of God, all the eyes, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the voice, the whisper of God for us, be there to, to share with us the things of God. So we see the very glory of God. We see the Spirit of God. And in verse 6, and before the throne, here's what we saw from Ezekiel 1. I hope you stick with me now. There was a sea of glass like crystal, fixed. When you think about a sea of an ocean or a body of water, it's anything but fixed. It's always fluctuating, but not this one. This is a sea of glass. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne, there were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. These are pictures of of these cherubim. You can also look in Ezekiel 1 and get the picture of these cherubim. You can also look in Isaiah chapter 6 and once again get a picture of these cherubim. God's created uh, beings there who have full wisdom of the good. By the way, the full wisdom of good that Adam and Eve had before sin. All they knew was the good of the glory of God. Right? And God told them, do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they did, they broke the law, they, they, they did what they were not supposed to, and sin was in their heart. But here we see these cherubim who had not 
They have not sinned. And all they know is the wisdom and the knowledge of the nature of God. And it's there for them. And by the way, there for us. There for us too. I love this. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes, understanding, wisdom of knowing, in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the seventh living creature like a calf, the third living creature had the face of a man, the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Daniel is here described. We'll talk about that at some other point in time. Verse 8, the four living creatures, each having six wings full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day and night. Here's the point, and they are always saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. They're not commanded to say this, but God's glory must be reverenced. It must be shouted. It must be stated. It must be lived. And that's exactly what they do, which is the glory of the cherubim, to, to know the goodness and the nature of God, but to always, always be stating it. God, you are always holy. Triune, holy. Holy is God the Father. Holy is Jesus the Son. Holy is the Spirit of the living God. Lord, God Almighty, you've always been who was, who is in present tense, and is to come always, past, present, and future, always God. This is their glory to be in the presence of God. This is their joy to be in the presence of God. Verse 9, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever, forever and ever, the 24 elders, now hold on, when you see these cherubim that are bringing such worship to God, then the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints, they, they fall down before him. The word fall down is the word bow, which is the word for worship. When you, when you look at the word worship, it means to bow down. It means to see ourselves for who we are and to see him high and lifted up. And, and we don't put ourselves on the same plane as he is. That's what Satan did. Oh, no, no, we would never do that. We would humbly but but rightfully in, in a in a correct way we would bow down before him because he is god we are simply uh, an article of his love and 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 the blessing of his love the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and we worship him who lives forever and ever and we cast our crowns before the throne the Stephanos, the victory crown. Our victory that, that Jesus gave us for our service to Him in this world. We, we don't hold to those things. We don't say, this is our trophy, this is our possession. We say, no, in, in, in all the expanse of the glory of God, we don't, everything of value we cherish and lay before him. That's agape. That's love. It is our privilege to love him. It is our privilege to be in his presence. And when we are in the presence of such all, we, we freely bow before him. We freely take everything that was given to us and lay it before his feet because he's the only one worthy of such glory. And we say these words, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, including us, including heaven, including eternal life. Come on now, come on now. Including the world that would be full of sin. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Psalms 24, 1. The world and those who dwell therein. Verse 2. 
when you see the expanse of all that is there, that is all that is good, who created all things, it's even this world. And even, as we've heard so many times, he created the people who would curse him, not love him. He gave them an opportunity. Even Judas, he gave an opportunity, though he knew he would betray him. He even grew the tree that would, he would be crucified on. He even put the sun in the sky that became dark when he became our sin. He created the ground that they laid him in and the stone that rolled over the tomb. But when he came back, he came back victorious over all. And one day when I was 10 years old, and he stood at the door of my heart and knocked, I opened the door. And he came in with me. And he saved me. And I became his. And he has been my Lord and my Savior all these years. My precious prize. The one that I cherish more than all. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power. We've been given this thing called life, but because of Jesus, we have eternal life. Eternal life with Him. I think before we get into studying chapter 5 or chapter 6, all the way through the end of the book of the Revelation, where you'll see the, the unveiling of Christ and his judgment and how he will bring peace on earth, peace to all men. I think looking at chapter 4 and seeing that a vision of what it's all about. It's all about God. It's all about us serving him. It's all about us loving him, giving ourselves to him, yielding ourselves to him. Serving him with gladness. Coming before his presence with thanksgiving. I, I know I've already preached too long, but I can't help it. There's a, a, a psalm that I want to read. It just came to my mind. And, and I just want to share this with you real quickly. Psalms 29 says this. Given to the Lord, O you mighty ones. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Given to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth, strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Shalom. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you can know love, you can know joy, and you can know peace. It is the gift of God for us. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you live in deficit. You have nothing to hope for. But you have an opportunity if you're listening to me. You have an opportunity to hear the voice of God calling you, knocking at your heart's door. Repent of your sins. Repent of your ugliness and all the ways that you've fallen short of the glory of God. Tell Jesus you believe in him. You believe that he's God's son that came and died for you and rose again so that you can have life. 
Give your heart and life to Him. Give your life and become a follower of Christ. Be a child of God. Receive His salvation. And one day you'll be with me when we'll go into that place and we'll see a throne and one who's upon the throne. And it will be our joy to worship Him forevermore. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And I pray that God does an amazing work, a peace in your life today. Thank you and God bless.